Hi, I'm James Reel with the Southern Arizona Symphony Orchestra. We're at a break in rehearsal for our concerts coming up this weekend. Friday night at 7, that's the 27th of January at Valley Presbyterian Church in Green Valley. Then at 7.30 on Saturday, January 28th at Desert View Performing Arts Center in Saddlebrook. And at 3 p.m. on Sunday, January 29th at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Northwest Tucson. I'm with Erica Rausch who by day works in the solar energy industry and by night when the sun doesn't shine, she's the concertmaster of the Southern Arizona Symphony Orchestra. Hi, Erica. Hi. So what does it mean to be the concertmaster? What do you do that's different from what all the other people in the first violin section do? So I've got a couple of different responsibilities that I do with the orchestra. The first is that I'm a section leader. So I need to make sure that all the first violins are kind of on the same page and ideally playing all together. I also need to communicate with the other string section leaders, like violin, viola, cello, and bass, make sure that, again, that we are able to present a unified sound, uh, string sound to, to the group. Um, I also get to just translate what Linus is saying. So Linus is our conductor. He has an idea of what he wants from our sound. I get to turn that into something that the orchestra will um, maybe understand a little bit better. Because you speak English and he's Brazilian. <laughs> Because I speak string. <laughs> ah, I see. Now, speaking of different languages, in college you double majored in music and math. Are those complementary fields, or was one a relief from the other somehow? They work together pretty well, and actually, not just for me. I know a lot of people who do the math or sciences along with music. Um, there's quite a few members in this orchestra actually who do the same combination. So yeah, something about how the brain works and processes things, there is a certain order to both of those, which I think attracts me. Now, sometimes you have to do little solos within a composition. You're not playing the violin concerto. We have the Elgar Violin Concerto with Edwin E. Su Kim as soloist. But uh, you might have other little things to do during the course of the concert. How, do. how does that work? Well, uh, thankfully, it's not uh, at every concert. Um, but every now and then, a con composer does decide that they want a solo violin to do something, so then it does fall onto my shoulders to take that on. Sometimes it's just a couple of notes, sometimes it's a bit more of an extended passage, as in this upcoming concert. Ah, uh, what happens? Well, in the fourth movement of the Swan Lake, um, it's pretty much, it goes from a harp uh, solo to a first violin solo for most of the movement. So you're on the spot in Tchaikovsky Swan Lake Suite for a little while. Do you enjoy that? Um, yes, once I get over the nerves. <laughs> Does that happen before the concert or during the concert? Both. Getting over the nerves. Oh. Both. <laughs> um, we had some questions posted on Facebook, and one of them had to do with your background, your family background, and I think there are two related questions. How did you choose the violin, and did you come from a musical family? Sure. So my mother studied music education in college, so she was a music teacher. So we were surrounded by music uh, when we were growing up. Um, the story I've been told is that when I was four, um, I was told, you want to play the violin, right? And I said, sure, of course I don't remember this. Um, so yes, yeah, so then I just went on and um, took lessons from that point on. And here I'm still playing X many years later. You had a family string quartet, didn't you? I do, so I've got uh, two sisters. So there's um, one other sister and I play the violin. My youngest sister plays the cello, and my father plays the viola. Oh. So when uh, we all got to a stage where we could play with other people pretty easily, uh, we started pulling that out. So it was fun just to do together, something to do together, as well as earn a little bit of cash. Because when you're in high school and junior high, there's not a whole lot of, a lot of opportunities for that. So you grew up near Chicago. Now you live in Tucson. Now that you're here, away from your family, do you have opportunities to play chamber music as well as orchestral music? I do. Um, through Sasso and through um, other orchestras in town, I've gotten to know other musicians. Um, so yeah, it's just a matter of making those connections and then saying, hey, let's get together Friday night and just play something. How is that experience different for you, playing chamber music different from playing in the orchestra? Well, um, with the orchestra, it's great to be able to present this really big, powerful, massive sound as a big group. With chamber music, it's much more intimate uh, sound. It's your, I'm really conversing much more closely with each of the other members of that group. So I, I, if I had to choose, I'd probably lean towards chamber music in my preference. Nice. Uh, one of the other questions we got from Facebook had to do with 
whether the Tucson music scene shaped your approach to making music in Tucson somehow. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that means. Paul Burke, what does that mean? Uh, <laughs> but I, I suppose you come, you're a stranger in China, you've been here, what, 12, 13 years now? Yep, 13, uh, going on 14 years. Did you just dive in, or uh, how did this happen? Uh, I pretty much did dive in to Sasso. So I arrived in the summer of 2003 and immediately started looking around. That fall, when the Sasso season started, I reached out to the personnel manager and said, hey, what can I do to get in there? Um, and at the time, there weren't any auditions. I was just able to come on in and join the group. Um, there are auditions now, but we are always looking for more musicians, so feel free to join us. Um, and I took it from there. And again, through Sasso, then I got to meet a lot of other musicians and, and other opportunities opened up. I'm hoping that you're going to elaborate on your connections in the community <laughs> because you also play from time to time with another orchestra and you do other gigs around town. Um, do those are those things that you look for, or do people know about you and ask you to come join? Them? More the latter. So I do also play with the Tucson Repertory Orchestra. So that's um, kind of a pop-up thing, uh, a monthly reading session, but twice a year we do hold uh, concerts uh, that are free and open to the public. And then beyond that, it's just, yeah, just, again, knowing people and say, hey, what are you doing and what can I do and going from there. What is it that you enjoy about being in Sasso, besides being able to be the bossy concert master? <laughs> well, uh, the camaraderie. Uh, definitely the people here are really great to work with. Great. Thanks, Erica. You earned your cookie. I'll give it to you after this. Great. Our concerts are coming up this Friday night in Green Valley at Valley Presbyterian Church, on Saturday night at Desert View Performing Arts Center in Saddlebrook, and Sunday afternoon at 3 at St. Andrew's Presbyterian in Northwest Tucson. I hope you can join us.